Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing the complete testing and troubleshooting of the ignition system on a Star 650 motorcycle. Before you go out and spend money to have a mechanic go and test or replace parts that don't need replacing, there are a couple things that you can do to ensure that something is definitely broken or perfectly operational might lead you to go and look at something else that needs to be replaced. Uh, for this, we just remove the fuel tank and the seat. I have links to another video for that operation. Also, we'll be using one other item that could be bought in an auto shop for just a couple of dollars. We'll make a test like this much easier to accomplish. And that's about it. So let's get started. So first and foremost, it kind of goes without saying that if you're uh, testing for an ignition problem, you probably don't have a running motorcycle. What we do want to do is check the battery and make sure that the battery is full. If you have a dead battery, you can't even start the bike or something, you're not going to get spark anyway. So let's take a look at that. Pop this cover off, exposing the battery. And we set our meter to DC. Everybody at this point should have a meter to be able to work on their motorcycle. You could get it for a couple of dollars at Harbor Freight. I happen to have a charging cable right here, so I'm just gonna measure mine right off the charging cable. If you have one, you could do that too. I can see mine's 12.2 uh, volts. This is fine. Good rule of thumb is if there's enough juice in the battery to start the bike, there's gonna be enough uh, juice in the battery to run the ignition. But if it's flat, you know, you got nothing to work with. You may have charging issues. That's for a separate conversation. If it's been sitting for a while and you want to throw it on the charger before you continue, I urge you to do that. And so while we're down here, pop this bad boy open. We'll see here that there's a fuse labeled here as ignition. And if that fuse is broken, you have no ignition. So you want to check that fuse. We're going to pull that out. We'll have a look at it right quick. Here it is. You can do visual inspection or you can put your meter on diode mode. You can see that fuse is good. If the fuse is bad, replace the fuse, button everything up. You may have just gotten lucky right there. Your ignition may work. Uh, if that fuse is good, take this opportunity, check all these other fuses. If you have another bad fuse, that may lead towards another problem and a problem that could be affecting the ignition as well. It goes through more than one fuse. There's also a main fuse. With that out of the way, we'll proceed onward. I'm gonna point out that what I'm about to do now will be done exactly the same for the front cylinder as the rear cylinder. So I'm just gonna demonstrate this on the rear cylinder. Before I do this, I wanna ensure that the bike is powered off. Could be a shocking experience if it isn't. You've been warned. I'm gonna start by disconnecting all of the connections from the coil. This includes connection here to the spark plug this top connection to the coil. We can see this one is red black and it's a metal connector with a plastic shield on it. it. Just goes directly onto it. We can see a different connector here, a plastic connector. It's got an orange connection on it. I may have to disconnect these to gain access to it on this one, just because these are in the way. There we go. Remember which one went where. We do our primary coil test. I'll measure here. Let's see this half an ohm in the cables. And I'm going to go across those leads directly on the coil. We see 4.8, 4.7. We subtract half an ohm. We would get 4.2 ohms. It should be between 3.8 and 4.6. And that tells me that the primary windings in here should be okay, according to the resistance. Now I'll connect down to the spark plug lead to this top red-black connection. I see 23.2. What we're actually seeing is a combination of 10K in the cap that goes to the spark plug itself, as well as the resistance in the coil that's giving us our grand total. Now we could get a more accurate reading by actually removing the cap from the wire. It would be kind of destructive. So as long as we could remove 10K from our total value and arrive at a value that's within the constraints, which this one is, we would see about uh, 12k that's just fine I'm gonna do the same thing on the front too and make sure we arrive at the same number that's what we're gonna be looking for and if we have the same number up front then I'm gonna call that good enough and I didn't have to remove the air box the cables right over here I pulled it off with a pair of needle nose pliers just so I could get the end of the meter on the end of the coil here and then I will grab the cable from the other side and I'll take a measurement these coils should be at the same temperature. And we can see this one is showing 22.2K. Given ambient temperature, service life, and what have you, this tells me that both of them have the same internal characteristics. Both of them are probably good. It also tells me that both coils 
windings inside are most likely just fine, as in this case. So I'm gonna plug that wire back in now. If I wanted to, I could get the pliers in there again and pull the other one and do the other winding to measure across to see those couple of ohms. I know that one's good, but that's how I would go about doing that if I didn't feel like removing the entire air box. Just get in there, pull it off, make the measurement with pliers, carefully put those connectors back on. As part of our coil checks, we're also going to check the pickup coil. We're going to do that now. We're going to expect between 182 and 222 ohms at 68 degrees. It's about 90 here. And I'm seeing 213 at 90 degrees. That means this is well within tolerance. If this is open, that could be a problem right there. That's an entirely different type of job here for repair, but that would point towards the lack of ignition. That would be something where you would have to say, I gotta stop and make a repair down there. But if that's good, you can move past that safely. Another test easy to conduct, switch the multimeter to volts DC. Turn the key on the bike to on. Your first test will be with the start stop switch in the stop position. Put one of these probes on the ground and the other one on one of these pins, you should see nothing. Then I'll flip the switch to the on position, again to ground, and then to one of those pins, and we should see the battery voltage. If you're not seeing the battery voltage, then obviously the coil's not getting voltage, you have other problems. Did you follow the fuse step that I did before? That'd be a good idea. Mains and the ignition fuse. Also check that switch up top, see if you have a problem there. For the next test before I conduct it, I want to make sure that I fully run the bike out of gasoline. Doesn't seem to be any gas in the system. I want to point out that in purging the carburetors, you've also proved out the main switch by the key, as well as this start and stop switch up here. So those are working good. It further demonstrates that the neutral switch works. If mine was on the bike right now, you would see a neutral indication on the dash because the bike is not in the cabinets in front of me and also demonstrates my next test is gonna be with the gapping tool. I've set this up for nine millimeters and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove the cable from the bike. This tool will require removing the end like so. And I can plug it into here and this side of the tool needs to be grounded. So I've got the spark plug wire coming in now through the unit and it is connected to ground right off of the cooling fin. I'll turn on the bike we can hear the fuel pump is empty. And now I'll hit the starter and we'll look for spark. And we can see right there, getting closer. That's a good ignition. Such a test could easily be repeated on the other side. That side's good too. When finished, before removing, make sure the bike is off. You don't want to get zapped. Remove from the spark plug side first before the ground, like that. Put the cable back in, and then just unclip the connector. If you've gotten this far and you have spark, but you still have no spark going into the combustion chamber, at this point, it probably the spark plugs. So we're just gonna pull this cable and we're gonna pull the plug, we're gonna have a look at it. If you don't have a compressor, it's a good idea to blast this area with a little canned air before you remove the plug to get out any foreign matter or debris so it doesn't get down to the combustion chamber. We'll be using our 18 spark plug remover socket. Just break tension with the ratchet. I like to pull them by hand. I'm very guarding of spark plugs. Inspect your plugs. Do they look like crap? Do they need to be replaced? Do they need to be cleaned? Are the corners nice and sharp and defined? Do you want to file them down? A lot, a lot of people, they just don't feel comfortable with that. They just want to replace them. And that's fine too. Assuming that the plug, the electrode, everything's okay, or you want to replace it, check your gap. The gap is, uh, I believe it's 35035. So we'll take a look at the gap right quick. I know this is gapped right. So this is gap 35. This plug is good. So if your plug is insanely off, you might want to address that. Make sure your gap is correct. Clean it up on the wire wheel or buy new plugs. 
do whatever you'd like. There is another thing you can do. Instead of using the tool that I recommended, plugs themselves can be checked by plugging them into the cable and grounding the negative portion of the plug against the, the fin right here and repeating the test that I showed and you can watch the spark jump across the plug. I caution you that if you want to do this, you do so at your own risk. But you can check the plug working by using the plug to do this test as opposed to the test tool that I used previously. Sometimes it's just foul plugs. I'm gonna put this plug back in now. Now at this point, if you're getting spark on the spark plug test or the other test, and you realize the same thing that I'm telling you now that your ignition is probably fine, you probably have a problem somewhere else, but at least you didn't waste your money or time on a new ignition for no reason whatsoever. So start putting your focus somewhere else. Now that you've ruled out ignition, you could go to fuel, air, or compression. So I hope you found this video on the Yamaha Ignition System troubleshooting and repair enjoyable, entertaining, informative, and helpful. Hit that like button below. It helps me a lot when you do. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?